Okay, moving into talking about some important definitions, um, I kind of alluded to this uh, in the previous slide when we started talking about what quadrant angles go in, um, but standard position means that the angle is drawn with its vertex at the origin with one ray on the positive x-axis, that would be the initial side, and so like I said uh, in the previous um, part of the notes, the initial side is always on that positive x-axis, and then the terminal side is just rotating into a quadrant. And so the two things you need for an angle to be drawn in standard position is that the vertex is at the origin and the initial side is on the positive x-axis. And so if we take a look at these three pictures, two of them are not in standard position and one of them is. And so if we take a look at this first one, um, well, this vertex is at the origin where it's supposed to be, but the initial side is not on the positive x-axis. It is floating into the first quadrant. So this is not standard position. And the reason for that is because the initial side is not on the positive x-axis. For the second picture, here the initial side is on the positive x-axis, but the vertex is not drawn at the origin. So once again, this is not standard position. This time though, the reason is because that vertex is not drawn at the origin like it should be. And so if you look at this third picture, this is drawn in standard position because the two things needed are satisfied. Your initial side is on the positive x-axis and the origin is where that vertex is located. And so yes, this is in standard position. And so whenever we draw an angle, if we ever need to draw one, we need to make sure that we're doing it in standard position with that vertex at the origin. And more importantly, that initial side is always going to be the positive x-axis. That's where zero degrees and zero radians is always going to be is on that positive x-axis. Okay, very important information coming up right here on this slide. We are going to put our angles into a right triangle and use some facts that we learned in geometry to figure out what the three trig ratios, sine theta, cosine theta, and tangent theta will be inside of the unit circle. And then we're gonna introduce three new ratios called the reciprocal ratios, which are cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. On my triangle over here, I see that I have an angle theta. I'm gonna call the base of this triangle x and the height of this triangle y, and then the hypotenuse r, which is going to stand for radius because our triangle is going to go into a circle, and so the hypotenuse will represent the radius of the circle. So now remember from geometry, we have this acronym so katoa. And what this helps us do is it helps us figure out what the ratios of sine, cosine, and tangent are. And so for sine of theta, what we're looking for is for sine theta to be the opposite side of the angle divided by the hypotenuse. And so looking at our triangle here, here is our theta. The opposite side is going to be y, and the hypotenuse is going to be R. And so sine theta is going to be y divided by r. Cosine theta is going to be the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Remember that the adjacent side is the side that actually touches the angle. And so if the angle is here, the adjacent side is right next to it, and the adjacent side is x. Divided by the hypotenuse of the triangle, which is going to be r. Tangent theta is going to be the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. And so the opposite side of my angle theta here is going to be y, and the adjacent side is going to be x. And so I have my three trig ratios here. Sine theta is y over r, cosine theta is x over r, and tangent theta is y divided by x. Now, the three reciprocal ratios, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Cosecant is just the reciprocal of sine theta. And so that means that cosecant theta is going to be r divided by y, just taking the reciprocal of the sine of theta. 
secant theta is the reciprocal of cosine theta. And so that means that this is going to equal to r divided by x. And finally, cotangent theta is the reciprocal of tangent theta, which means that cotangent theta is going to equal to x divided by y. Okay, very important slide here because I'm going to show you how to construct a table which you are going to need to memorize. And if you can follow what I'm talking about on this particular part of the notes, and especially when we get to this portion of it right here, I think this will hopefully make a lot of sense. And so let's assume that our right triangle is one of two special right triangles that you learned about in geometry. And so I've put those two triangles right here and right here. This is the 45, 45, 90 triangle and the 30, 60, 90 triangle. And so what we're going to do is we're going to find the values of sine, cosine, and tangent for each of these three very important angles that are located in quadrant one. And so if you'll remember from the beginning part of the notes, we said that pi over six was the same as 30 degrees. Really, you need to memorize it as pi over six because in calculus, we really only deal with radians. But for our purposes, since my triangles have degrees in them, we can think of that as 30 degrees. Pi over four was 45 degrees, and pi over three is 60 degrees. And so let's look first at sine of 30 degrees. And so if you go to 30 degrees, here is the triangle with 30 degrees. I know that sine is going to be the y over the r, or the opposite over the hypotenuse. And so if 30 is here, the opposite side is one, and the hypotenuse is going to be across from the right angle, and that is going to be two. And so sine of pi over six is equal to one half. Now for pi over four, that's 45 degrees, and so we're gonna have to go to this triangle. This is 45 degrees here, and so the opposite side will be one, the hypotenuse will be square root of two. Now I'm gonna write that down up here because we're not gonna to wanna to think about that as one over the square root of two. We're gonna to wanna to rationalize that because that's how it shows up more often. And so this becomes the square root of two over two. And so that's what I'm going to put in this box here for the value of sine of pi over four. Now the sine of pi over three, we're gonna have to go back to our other triangle. 60 degrees is right here. That's the same as pi over three. And so the opposite of this angle is going to be square root of three over two. And sine is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, which is two. And so what I want you to notice, I'm gonna fill in the first blank here. What I want you to notice about sine theta is that sine theta increases from one in the numerator to square root of two to square root of three. So one, two, three in the numerator, and then it's always divided by two. So it is an increasing function when you go from left to right. One half, square root of two over two, and square root of three over two. Okay, let's do cosine theta now. So going back to 30 degrees, which is pi over six. Cosine is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So this time that will be square root of three divided by two. Cosine of 45 degrees or pi over four is really the way that you need to think of it, is going to be adjacent side, which is one, divided by the hypotenuse, which is the square root of two. So again, we're getting one over the square root of two which we're going to write as square root of two over two. And then finally, pi over three, going back to our other triangle, here is pi over three or 60 degrees. The adjacent side to that is going to be one and the hypotenuse is going to be two. And so what I hope you are realizing about the values for cosine of theta is that they're the exact same values for sine of theta, just in the opposite order and it has a lot to do with the way these functions are named. Sine theta and cosine theta are called co-functions of one another. And so what that means is that they have the same values just at different times. And so it's the same values just in different order. And so I'm gonna say here for number two that cosine theta is in the reverse 
order as sine theta. And so what that means is that if you can memorize what sine theta is, you know what cosine theta is because it just goes in the opposite direction. Instead of one, two, three, like sine theta, cosine is three, two, one. And now for tangent theta. Tangent theta, I know, is y divided by x or the opposite divided by the adjacent. And so what we're going to get in that case for 30 degrees, here is 30 degrees, the opposite is gonna be one and the adjacent is going to be square root of three. So once again, I'm gonna have something that needs to be rationalized, which is gonna be multiplied by root three over root three. And so that's gonna give me the square root of three divided by three. But real quick, before I move on, I want you to notice something, and I'm gonna circle this in a different color. Uh, one over the square root of three is really just the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta. And so really, in order to get tangent, all you're really going to have to do is take the sine theta and divide it by the cosine theta. It makes it really easy to figure out what tangent theta is supposed to be. Now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna erase my blue because I don't want that to um, mess you up in any way. So I'm gonna erase those things uh, from here so that you're not seeing those. And um, there we go. And so, but what I want you to know is that um, I am gonna rewrite this for tangent theta. We know that this is gonna be sine theta divided by cosine of theta. And so if you look here at pi over four, square root of two divided by square root of two is going to be one. And so let me do that with red, one. And so let's see if that checks out with our triangle. So going to 45 degrees, which is pi over four, tangent of pi over four is gonna be opposite over adjacent. Well, one divided by one, lo and behold, is equal to one. And then finally for pi over three, tangent of pi over three, all you really have to do to figure it out is take the value for sine and divide by the value for cosine and square root of three divided by one is going to give you the square root of three. And if you check to see if that lines up with your triangle, then 60 degrees or pi over three is here. The opposite side would be square root of three and the adjacent side would be one. So root three divided by one, as you can see, is gonna give you root three. And so the third thing to notice about this table is that if you wanna get the tangent values, all you have to do is take the sine and divide it by the cosine, and that will give you the row for tangent theta. So just real quick, one more time, sine theta increases from one half to root two over two to root three over two. Cosine theta is the same values, just in the reverse order. So root three, root two, and one. And then tangent theta, just take the sine and divide by the cosine, in order to get that last row. Okay, we already talked about this concept earlier in the notes, and so I'm not gonna spend a ton of time here, but positive angles rotate in the counterclockwise direction. So down here we have a positive angle. Notice that it still starts on the positive x-axis and then has that counterclockwise rotation um, to indicate that is indicated here by this arrow. And then negative angles rotate in the clockwise direction. So again, same initial positive x-axis, except that this time the arrow you can see indicates that that angle rotated in the clockwise direction, which would indicate that it is a negative angle. Okay, one other very important concept is that of a reference angle. And a reference angle is the acute angle. And so what you need to think of when you think acute is that we're talking about the small angle between the terminal side of an angle and the x-axis. And if you're filling in the notes, I would really like for you to circle or underline or highlight if you've got a highlighter that x-axis because it is so important. It is such an easy thing to mess up is that you draw the reference angle going back to the y-axis and that is not correct. Reference angles always go back to the closest x-axis. And so I hope this picture does a little bit 
of a good job of explaining what a reference angle looks like. It is always the closest distance back to the X axis. And so for example, just here in quadrant three, if you have an angle that's in quadrant three, this red is representing the reference angle because that is the small angle that goes back to the X axis. And so reference angle is gonna be very important for what we want to get accomplished today. Okay, also a very important slide, and I know I'm saying that a lot, but all of these concepts are gonna come together at the end of the notes, and we're gonna have to mesh them all together and know how to utilize each one in order to answer questions. And so on the unit circle, that's what we're studying on how to find exact values on the unit circle. The unit circle is a circle centered at the origin with a radius of one. And so that changes our definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent just a little bit. So remember that sine theta was equal to y over r. Well, if r is one, that just means now that sine theta is equal to the y coordinate. So whatever the y coordinate is on that point on the unit circle, that's what the value of sine theta is going to be. Likewise, cosine theta, remember, was x divided by r, but if r is one, that just means that cosine theta is going to equal to x. Uh, tangent theta doesn't really change a lot because remember, tangent theta didn't have r in it to begin with, and so we can't really simplify that formula much, um, but we are going to uh, be able to simplify sine and cosine. And so this is gonna be really helpful Okay, this idea that sine theta is equal to y and cosine theta is equal to x, that is going to be really helpful in determining what the exact value is of any angle that is what we call a quadrantal angle. And that word quadrantal basically just means that the angle is not in a quadrant, but it is on an axis. And that's what quadrantal means, is that it is on an axis. And so that means that we're going to have these four points that are all on an axis on this unit circle. I'm gonna do my best to draw a circle. It's not gonna be great. Please don't make fun of me or laugh at me. That's my best effort. And so what are these points if the radius is truly one? Well, this point right here has an X coordinate of one and a y coordinate of zero. This point right up here at the top of the circle has an x coordinate of zero and a y coordinate of one. The point over here on the left side has a point negative one and zero, and on the bottom of this circle, we have the point zero, negative one. And so remember one more time that this over here is zero radians. The top of the unit circle is at pi over two, that's because one, uh, all the way, like halfway around the circle would be 180 degrees or pi radians. And then the bottom of the circle is going to be three pi over two. Now there is a nice shortcut for determining the sine of the trig function if the angle is in a quadrant. And so here is that shortcut. The first quadrant, everything is going to be positive. So your sine, your cosine and your tangent are all positive in quadrant one. In quadrant two, the sine is the only function that is positive. That means that cosine and tangent are both negative. And there's a, a nice acronym that goes with this. And so we're gonna fill that in as we go along as well, because this will help you remember it. In quadrant three, the only function that is positive is tangent. And so tangent is positive. That means that sine and cosine are both negative. And so let's see if I can put the word in there. Yes, there we go, trust. And then finally, in the third quad, or the fourth quadrant, I'm sorry, the cosine of theta is positive. And that means that sine and tangent are both negative negative. And so that last word, you probably guessed it already, is castle. All students trust castle. If you just trust me, I promise you will be good at the unit 
circle. And so one more time, what does this mean? Quadrant one, everything is positive. In quadrant two, sine of any angle in quadrant two is gonna be positive, but cosine and tangent will be negative. In quadrant three, tangent of any angle in quadrant three is gonna be positive. That means that sine and cosine in quadrant three will be negative. And then in quadrant four, cosine is gonna be positive, which means that sine and tangent in quadrant four will be negative. All students trust Castle.